Hi, this is my review of Kanzume Goddess. Kanzume Goddess is a deck building game, a card game where you need to purchase different warriors and disciples. You sort of build your army to defeat a team of rival gods or even participate in a free-for-all match. Now let's talk about uh, the what you get with the can first. The can comes in this plastic case of sorts. It's supposed to protect the can from dust and perhaps moisture, so uh, and I think it does a pretty good job at it. You can open it over here. And with this can, you have this little like uh, phone strap thingy but even though well it's good quality and well designed this isn't one of my uh, favorite goddesses or, or female warriors of the game the thing is she's supposed to be Livra yeah, from the zodiac but she has kind of like this grandma or dollish face to her that I do not like that much I would have preferred if they used perhaps Virgo and the can itself is quite sturdy it does have a couple of errors or maybe just one because it's swapped now this character here is supposed to be Ares and this character over here is supposed to represent Aquarius but they have their names switched although it's pretty cool that you have like the uh, plot or story of the game here as a sort of like a legend and down here you have a, a specific a zodiac information like uh, the which one is the uh, demon of Aries and demon of Aquarius the attributes of both of the signs their personalities etc there's even though the can does a pretty good job at keeping the game inside and pr protecting the cards there is something that I have a mixed opinion about and it's this sort of like uh, plastic teeth of uh, insert of sorts it basically keeps the cards I inside uh, quite well but as to the protection I'm not entirely sure because when you get the cards out uh, this thing kind of like sticks to the sides a bit you can hear how it gets like that and uh, some of the cards could be damaged on their borders if you are not careful or on the edge of the cards and so I still don't know what to think about this I've had this this game for a few years and I still don't know if I like this plastic teeth insert of sorts with the game you have uh, two cards that are advertisements for other games of the company which is uh, Barbarossa and, and this is supposed to be like a game of Nazi girls or something and uh, Tanto Cuore uh, that is a game featuring maids uh, I have yet to try those games or to own them because they uh, seem to focus a bit more on the Lolita side of things and I'm more into more uh, buxom women when it comes to art in anime and manga, etc. You have this uh, little... I guess you could call it a booklet. Mm. Even though it's sturdy and does a good job at explaining the, the rules, uh, it does show some wear and tear, so handle it with care. And I think there were a couple of typos too. Now, before I show you the cards, I want to talk about a bit about how you play the game. Let's talk about uh, the storyline first. The storyline is basically that the Greek gods, that is Zeus, Poseidon, etc. They decide to um, divide the rulership of, of the world. So they divided, uh, the, they separated the sky from the oceans and from the underworld. And Athena was supposed to rule over the rest of the earth. But the Norse gods did not like this. So they began this terrible war. And they summoned different warriors from different, different uh, signs of the zodiac. 
and also other supernatural beings and apparently they all died in a sort of like a Ragnarok type of thing and their souls were trapped in this can and so uh, you even have like a little legend here something that it says release me from the can and I will make your wishes come true or something so uh, as you have probably noticed this game has a lot to do with uh, sexual innuendos this is a bit of a well I don't know if I would call it an erotic game, but it shows some pretty um, sensual art or sexy art. So the objective of the game is, well, you can play it in two modes. You can play it as free-for-all or in teams, that is the Norse gods against the Greek gods. In team, uh, team mode or team gameplay, you need to defeat a main god of each team, that is, uh, the Norse team has one god as like the king of, or ruler of all gods, and the other team has one as well. So you need to defeat that god by reducing uh, that deity's uh, energy points to zero. But if you play free-for-all, uh, you, you can either uh, win by defeating all of your opponents or raising your energy points to 25. It's also important to say that in team mode, uh, the other deities participate as, participate as support gods. They only have 10 energy points, if I'm not mistaken, and they are just there to support the main god. Even if they get uh, killed, they're actually sealed. And so they come back after a while. So it's important to focus on eliminating the main god of the opposing team. Now let's talk about the gameplay. You just start out with your hands, uh, hand of cards and in the middle of the table, that is the public area, you have six decks with warriors and you also have three decks of disciples. Warrior cards are purchased to attack or thwart or frustrate your opponent's plans. While the disciple cards are used to purchase those warrior cards and other disciples. First, you begin, let's talk about the disciples first. There are the most basic type of disciples, which are the priestess. The priestess art looks really sexy, in my opinion. It's, let me see if I can get that into focus, sorry. There you go. The priestess is, uh, gives you one faith point when you use her. And faith points are basically like the currency that you use to purchase warriors or other disciples. And if you want to purchase more priestesses, you need to, oh sorry, here is, you see this value over here that it says two? That means you need two faith points to purchase a priestess. So in that turn, you won't be able to uh, use that the priestess that you just purchased, but in your next turn, you will be able to use it. Other disciples include uh, the sacred guardians. The design of the Sacred Guardians is also quite hot. Um, although you cannot, sorry, you cannot see the face. And the Sacred Guardians are quite flexible. Uh, they are quite defensive. You use them to protect yourself from getting damaged, but you can also use them to uh, negate or cancel a god's ability. But by doing that, you sacrifice the Sacred Guardian and it goes to the Netherworld, so it dies. And the other type of Disciple, which is like an enhanced version of the Priestess, is the Bishop. I also love the design of this card. Looks really nice. Let me see if I can... Uh, okay. So the Bishop, as you can see, she gives you two Faith Points when you play it. And it costs three... Uh, Fate points to purchase it, and so it's better than the priestess, but more expensive. And this game requ requires you to think ahead of things. Sometimes you purchase things and you won't be able to use them immediately, but you have to think ahead to, towards the uh, later turns in the game. The game is divided by phases. Oh, uh, yes, uh huh. In, by phases, the first phase uh, you have the starting uh, phase, and this is just a phase where you uh, play some powers of the different deities because you represent one of the gods 
of the Norse Pantheon or the Greek Pantheon. And here you have an opportunity to play those abilities. We'll talk about the deities uh, later on in this review. And then you have the play phase. This is uh, one of the main phases, or probably the, the most important phase, at least when it comes to uh, hurting your opponents. And this is where you can play your disciples to purchase cards from the central uh, group of decks that I was telling you. And so you can purchase warriors in the next phase. But if you already have warriors in your hand, you can play them. Now let's talk about some of the warriors. You have Ares. And she's really good at attacking. She's all about offense. And then we have Cancer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she looks really shy. Cancer has the special ability of mimicking uh, the ability of some other card that you have played. Now, in this um, phase, you have to take combos into consideration. Because, for example, maybe you have three or four warriors in your hand and you want to attack with all of them. You cannot do, do it unless it's a legal combo. Because, for example, maybe you, you say to attack with Ares. And... As you can see, she has this big red sphere um, over here. And you have two smaller spheres. One is green and one is blue. And that means that Ares is a red card. And you can only combo it with some other card that uh, matches the, the spheres. Because, for example, if you played Ares first and you wanted to play Cancer, Cancer is a green card. But luckily, Eris has a green sphere there, one of the little spheres. So that means you can combo it with uh, Cancer. And because Cancer has the ability of duplicating the effect of some other card, in this case Eris, you would make like a double attack in that case. So you can make some pretty big combinations. Because, for example, if you had, uh, as you can see, Cancer has two small red spheres. That means you can combo, uh, uh, you can play a red card as well. So if you had another red card, you could play Ares, Cancer, and some other card to make a more powerful attack. And of course, you, you, you also have to take uh, keep in mind uh, which god you are going to be attacking. And you have other cards such as uh, Capricorn, which allows you to draw a card and to it, it could even protect you from other attacks. You also have uh, Pisces. Mm. Uh, this is all about discarding cards. I'm just going to show you some of the cards and if I remember some of the effects, I will tell you because uh, some of their abilities are, are slightly deep, uh, slightly complicated. Pisces also looks really hot. Scorpio, she looks really kinky and sexy. She's also a very offensive card and, and uh, can deal a lot of damage and, well, decent damage and it also creates a discard effect. Um, Libra is about drawing cards and protecting yourself. And I'm telling you, I don't really like the design. She looks a bit like a grandma or doll. I don't know. It's somewhat weird, in my opinion. I really like Virgo. This is glasses done right. As you can see, she also has glasses like uh, Libra, but she looks way sexier, in my opinion. Maybe it's the uh, shape of her body or the face or her long neck. I don't, I'm not sure. And then you have uh, Gemini. I wonder if if they're actually twins of it, or if it's actually at the same entity but showing two sides of herself because as you can see one is kind of like a devil and the other is like an angel and Leo this is an attack card this is um, somewhat weak in its attack power but it's uh, also a cheap card so you can uh, purchase it almost right away then you have Aquarius she also looks uh, kind of kinky and allows you to draw two cards and has uh, some netherworld effect play to her as well. To use those cards that have already died in the, during the game. And then you have uh, Taurus. And she's all about healing and rescuing you.
from Certain Death. One of my favorite cards, both because of the artwork and its utility. Sagittarius, this is a very tricky card. The design is pretty good as well. Uh, but she basically can eliminate or assassinate other cards. So you could use this just to take uh, the opportunity away from your opponents. Maybe they want to purchase a very powerful warrior and you get rid of that warrior. Or maybe we'll talk about her usefulness if you are playing as Hades. You also have Valiant Star, one of the most powerful attackers in the game. She looks kind of like a sexy vampire or a succubus, perhaps. Probably a vampire, who knows. And then you have Fierce Star, and also quite offensive card that you can, uh, by sacrificing a bit of your um, of your cards, I think, yes. Sacrificing your cards, you can deal quite a bit of damage. She looks like a devil or succubus as well. And you have Pandora. Mm, it's also about sacrificing cards to the netherworld. You have Noble Star, and this is a very powerful card because... Let me double check. Well, you can draw a card, but this card also enables you to reflect damage. If someone attacks you with a big attack, you can actually use this card to redirect that damage. So uh, this game is not always about attacking, attacking, attacking. If you attack recklessly, that damage could be used against you or one of your teammates if you are playing in uh, the team mode. And then you have a Siren, that is uh, sort of like a support card. Then you have the Mermaid. This card is also quite useful because it will give you faith points. So if you need to purchase a very expensive card, the mermaid will assist you with that. So as I was telling you, you use these warriors to attack uh, the opposing deities. And after you are done attacking, um, you uh, get to spend those faith points that you generated during that play phase to purchase new cards and recruit new, wa new warriors and new disciples. When you purchase a card, it goes to the top of your deck, so you won't be able to use it during this turn, but uh, later on you will. And all of the cards that you normally play go to your discard pile, and that's uh, good because once you run out of cards in your game, sorry, in your deck, you reshuffle uh, your entire deck and you get to play those cards again. So as long as they don't end in the netherworld, uh, everything is fine. <laughs> So that's part of the strategy in this game as well, trying to make the other players lose their cards to the netherworld. And after the recruit phase, you enter into the final phases, which are the discard phase, uh, where you get to draw a new hand, and the end phase, and many other uh, abilities of the gods and, um, are triggered in these phases, or you can play them in these phases. And as I was telling you, you keep playing the game, so that you can, until you eliminate your opponents or you raise your energy to 25 in the case of the free-for-all style of play. Now let's talk about the gods. Some of the gods are on the gender bender side of things, that is, some gods should be uh, male, but they put a sexy lady in place. So let's take a, a look at the Greek pantheon first. I'm just gonna talk a few, a bit of the abilities because all of the gods, the gods are somewhat complicated in their effects. They usually have an ability that benefits them in free for all and also one that is uh, well suited for team play. And some abilities are useful in any situation. So, for example, we have uh, Zeus, father of the gods, and uh, he's pretty good at damaging everyone. Uh, it's just a bit of damage, but he can damage everyone uh, because of this effect uh, and he also has a very good ability for team play let me see if I can, uh, because it's very important it says, uh, during your play phase you may perform adjudication oh, adjudication is very important when you adjudicate, you basically draw a card and you see if it matches a condition and if it matches, maybe it's a warrior or a disciple as described in some other effect you get to play a powerful effect so, if you reveal, reveal from your hand the same card shown by adjudication, you may select a player and look at their hand. 
You may select any number of warrior cards in their hand and put them into the netherworld. A very devastating card, as you can see. You lose one energy for each card put in the netherworld in this way. You can only activate this ability once per turn. So here is Oritok's strategy. As you can see, uh, Zeus requires you to play uh, in a very specific way because you're going to be spending energy as you activate his effects. You need cards that heal you, such as stars, to recover that energy that you're going to be spending while um, shooting those uh, thunderbolts. And each god plays differently because of that. And considering the adjudication, it could be a good idea to have some repeats in your uh, deck when you purchase the cards using fate points to um, get that adjudication effect going. That you always have like a repeat of, of a certain card. And then you have Poseidon, who is uh, it's a very um, offensive card that attacks quite uh, well. It's about uh, sending your opponent's warriors to the netherworld. And as you can see, instead of being Poseidon, you have this sexy lady instead. Artemis is one of the trickiest cards to play because she has a bond with Apollo. And as long as Apollo is in, in, in play, that is not out of, out of the game or sealed in some way, she cannot be attacked. So you need to use, for example, one of your disciples that has the cancel effect to cancel her ability and, uh, so that you can attack her. But the funny thing is that if for some reason Apollo attacks her, she suffers extra damage. So you can also um, play around with that effect. You can perhaps, if Apollo attacks you, you can use perhaps the card Noble Star, if I'm not mistaken, to reflect that damage towards Artemis to damage her. And then you have Hades. This is one of my favorite deities uh, because if you manage to get your hands on a few Sagittarius cards, you will be able to send uh, cards to the netherworld and reclaim those cards from that place. So Hades allows you to get some very expensive cards. So for example, Noble Star uh, costs 8 faith points. Hades would allow you to get it from the netherworld uh, at a cheaper price, all things considered. And then you have Athena, who is very good at um, using yellow or gold warriors so once you if you play as this deity you need to focus on getting those warriors for your uh, deck because you basically have like free protection or well not free protection but protection available at almost every turn because of those yellow warriors usually you only you need specific warriors to allow, give you that defense value but not so with athena and then you have apollo and he's uh, quite powerful because he actually has some regeneration effects. So this is a, a very useful card uh, to play defensively. Now let's talk about the Norse Pantheon. You have Hel, the goddess of Niflheim. And she also um, draws power from the netherworld. She... Uh, benefits greatly when someone dies, even if a uh, deity, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so yeah, you have a similar effect to that of, of Hades. Not mechanically so, but thematically so. Yes, it's quite similar. And you have Odin. He also has a pretty good uh, power of attacking um, two gods at once. So he's actually quite useful in free-for-all. Just don't push your luck too much with the ruler of Asgard because uh, you could get other players angry and they will start to target you. And then you have Thor. And Thor is all about uh, using warriors to attack, enhancing their attack power. You usually want to finish fights quickly with, with Thor because he also loses quite a bit of energy when he carries out those devastating attacks. And then you have Valkyrie who is quite useful because she kind of resurrects disciples and warriors. She's very good at uh, sacrificing your um, warriors and disciples. She kind of has a good chance of getting them back into play relatively fast. And you have Gefjan, and she uh, basically allows you to control a bit of the fate of, of the card of, of what you are going to draw. She's a, a somewhat of a 
luck based type of deity so in that way she's quite flexible in that you do not need to focus on getting a specific type of warrior uh, but uh, she's a bit of a wild card so i i consider her to be somewhat of an expert type of so if you are an expert player you should be playing a gefion if you are playing with inexperienced players in my opinion and then you have Loki, and this one is really interesting and everybody is going to hate you if you play as Loki because, well, first of all, I really love the design. As you can see, it reflects that dual nature of Loki, sometimes an ally, sometimes an enemy. And um, Loki basically damages everyone during each turn. You, he also allows you to draw two more cards for your hand, but he's also dealing damage to you at the same time and he also suffers from that effect or from his own effect, so uh, you could say that he's kind of like accelerating, accelerating uh, Ragnarok. And um, Loki, is, uh, when he appears, uh, when a player gets to play as him, um, uh, the game speeds up considerably. And the cool thing of the deity is that you can have this, have this card to represent the energy points and you just move the god as you lose or gain energy points so uh, what do i think of kansume goddess this is one of my favorite card games although i think uh, there are some um, i guess you could say deceptive things about it not intentionally so well one thing could be intentional in the can it says that you it takes 45 minutes of play but at the minimum We've always, always had like one hour and 30 minutes session time. I've had games where I played with four people and we lasted like, it took about two and a half or even three hours. So that's a bit misleading. Maybe if you are experts and you don't have analysis paralysis, you could take it down to two hours per game session but it still takes quite a bit uh, and it also depends on how much how many healing effects you're going to use and the planning so 45 minutes just seems too unrealistic maybe two players if they play with lucky and um, perhaps zeus or something you could speed up gameplay but no this is usually around uh, two hours minimum when you when you play a game. Now the other deceptive thing is that I think because of the sexy artwork, I think that a lot of players because when when this one first came out, some players were like, ah, this game uh, it takes too long, and 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 but I think um, some players purchased this thinking that because of the sexy artwork, it, it was going to be a simple and fast game. But this is actually uh, quite deep. So, it's obviously not the same thing, but it kind of reminds me when you first play chess for the first time and uh, you take too much time because uh, you don't understand like the deeper aspects of chess. And of course, this isn't chess, but wh what I meant to say is that uh, there are many ways, many combos, many strategies and many tactics uh, related to the combinations of the deity that you are playing as and the different warriors and disciples. And you really want, need to explore them all if you want to play efficiently because otherwise you're going to lose immediately in the case of uh, the free-for-all type of game uh, it's quite normal to see some players eliminated in a few turns if they are not uh, playing to their deity's strength because for example i remember one time a player played as athena and that player she did not uh, get any yellow or, go or golden warriors and she had almost no way to protect herself and she was eliminated right away so you really need to understand uh, the strengths of, of your deities and uh, how the warriors combine with those deities and the finer points and how to play around with those things like the, the thing that Artemis cannot be attacked unless yeah, as long as At Apollo is, in, is playing but you can manipulate Apollo to hurt Artemis in some way 
And so you have to keep all of those things in mind. I, I really love this game. And if you have, uh, you can play it. I've had fun with it playing with women. But if you have like a bunch of uh, pals that are kind of on the otaku side of things, you're going to uh, delight yourself uh, t and yourselves taking a look at the sexy designs and the art of the cards. And when you eliminate your opponents, they're going to be like, no, my waifu, and you know, <laughs> all of that. So I, I highly recommend that you get a Kansume Goddess if you like a sexy anime artwork or, an, or anime-like artwork. And if you um, are not uh, bothered by playing a game that lasts a bit more than you would expect, as I was telling you, expect usually about two hours of uh, gameplay. And if you want to explore the deeper aspects of Kansume Goddess, because this is a... Uh, deceptively deep game, at least what would you, you would expect from the theme. And this is a, a game to be explored, to be played, and if possible, if you have like a hardcore gr group of players, uh, I think some matches are going to be really exciting and really close. So I would recommend that you get Kansume Goddess. Well, uh, thanks for watching my review. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know. See you later.